Nana, but since then, yeah. I think Nama. he's the guy getting the results, right? I, I haven't actually heard from Nam in a while. Uh, Wellmu is his other competition. He's oh, kind of fallen off a little bit. Um, and then Protosser, but he also kind of faded out a little bit. All right, well, here we are into the first game of the second half of the second group stage. Now, we'll be the third group stage later on. Here, up to the top left, as the Red Zerg player, it is himself. It is EGJ Dong. Yes, as the Dong. Really fun stream to watch because he is actually the fastest player I've ever seen play StarCraft. He is. And when he wins games, he actually comes up to you, shakes your hand, and goes, ding dong. <laughs> he probably should start at least, yeah. Look at that keyboard, Jeff. Razor. Are you proud of that keyboard. It's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, we're excellent premier commentators. We are the top tier premier commentators of right Tell now. us about his opponent, please. And down here. As the blue Protoss, it is, of course, Elfie. And what team is Elfie on these days? I know he had a person sponsored from Rob, Asus Rob. Uh, uh, Elfie's uh, on a new team. It's a Finnish only team by the name, I think it's Ents. Oh, okay. Team Very Ents. good. Uh, I'm not too sure who's on it. I, I can actually look it up for you, though. Um, they actually, so Finland actually has a great scene. It's like, it's like yeah. Namo, Welmu, Protoss, or Elfie. Um, they had that Terran player, what is his name? blanket on that, but they actually have like six or seven. Uh, Sarah was the other guy that's on his team, that's for yeah. sure. Uh, for like him. GM level, really good European players. It's really cool. It, from Finland, you would, I don't know you to suspect Finland to be one of the top countries, but they are. Look at this, look at that timing of the forge here. I mean, it's you know, about to hit uh, the line. He already has his forge done. We have a pylon coming in. What is this pylon? It's, uh, it's a pylon on the high ground. This is, uh, I mean, there is a completed forge. And Elfie is weird enough. This could finish and then begin to be... No, he cancels it. Okay. And he's happy with that. 25 minerals for a canceled pylon. And then if you look at all the drones and the missed mining time, it, it, it equates to pretty good there. Did that... Oh, he just said it to us at least. That's oh, good. that's great. I got a funny story I'll tell you about that later on. <laughs> Stuff like this. All right, so Elfie does cancel both the pylons, which means he's just going to settle for delaying the hatch. Jadong smartly puts down the hatch at the third base spot. Um, a slight inconvenience just in that his queen will have some travel time there. This probe does get found though, which does mean that the cannon rush threat should be shut down. A lot of times if that probe hides and the Zerg's not diligent about looking for said probe, it can sneak back around behind a mineral line and drop those cannons for a very uh, advantageous beginning for the Protoss player. Alright, so Jadon does manage to get his uh, third hatchery down in his natural location. Behind this, Elfie. I, I mean, if you look at Elfie and his attributes as a player, yeah. I, oh, 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 nice little offer by Elfie. Just get that in last minute. I would not be surprised to see some very aggressive two base plays. Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely a, of the aggressive ilk. That's just kind of what he's known for. Um, and if you look at the map, Belcher Vestige as well. This third base, while not ranking like in the last of all the maps in terms of how easy it is to take that third base, it is of the more difficult of the, of the maps. It's not an Aklon waste where that third is kind of gifted to you. Um, which does, again, kind of promote and suggest two-base play. Um, also, if you're looking at Jadong, did I? Can you still hear me? I hear you. Okay, so, just I making hear. sure. Uh, Jadong is, his mechanics, his macro will outpace you as the game goes on. Elfie kind of famous for being slower. Yeah. That matters a lot less earlier in the game. If you can, if you can do it with fewer units, you're going to be better off than against the guy that's got like eight octopus arms and doing it really well late game. So if Elfie wants to win this series against Jadon, it's probably better to win it in the in the 10 to, you know, 13, 14 minute mark. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I think yeah. so. All right, well, it's coming up to the six minute mark, so just get, bear that in mind, everyone at home, as Elfie is going to boost out a Zealot and a Stalker with the Mothership call. Yeah. So he's going to get himself across the map quite early here. Starting to put a bit of pressure on. Is that double zealot or is it double stalker? Okay. Double zealot, okay. Yeah. Just now starting warp gate upgrade. I mean, not a big deal, but look, the soccer's about to pop out. Yeah. And the mothership core is coming out. So a little bit of a mistake. Um, but I'm, I'm curious about the tech because chrono boosting the gateway in the mothership core, that's okay. You can do that. Um, you're, you should be facing slow lanes, so it, it's advantageous to get them out there, get them to work early. Uh, but a lot of times, the second that cybermex core finishes, your tech starts to take shape. And right now, Elfie is leading us on with nothing. We don't see anything coming out from him. Well, he's lost his two zealots there to uh, just a bunch of zerglings, and he may lose his stalker if he's not careful. We do see plus one attack being started behind for Elfie, and also a Twilight Council coming down quite early here. 
Yeah. And if you look at the, and when I say early, it doesn't really connect well with plus two finishing, for example. Right. So, I mean, what's, what's he really looking for with this? I have to imagine Blink. Um, because the Spore Crawler is so much more easily made, you no longer even need an evolution chamber. Uh, yeah. It just, you, you can make it, basically. Uh, DTs, while they obviously still definitely have utility, and they're more inexpensively made, which makes them, again, more attractive, I, I feel like the Blink is what Elfie's going to nominate for. And, and like you said, the, two, the, the plus two attack is not necessarily really well synced here. There is that Blink upgrade. But before he ever attacks, he should... Whoa, wow, now the Robo. Never mind, it's like a safe, weird macro play, I imagine. All right, well, we'll find out as the game does come on here. Behind this, Jadong's, you know, deflected his opponent quite well, and he's really focused on getting his creep spread from this uh, third base pushed out there. And uh, the, I think the biggest point for, for Jadong to probably focus on now is kind of getting some information, get some intel yeah. on what the hell Elfie's doing, because behind closed doors, it can be anything. And Jadong, I'm pretty sure he doesn't really know exactly who Elfie is and no. what he's capable of. I don't know if you've had words with him or not. I did not get the chance. Uh, a lot of times I'll be over there with the guys letting them know, especially our Koreans, because they, like you said, they actually would never know who Elfie is. Uh, and again, no slight to Elfie, it's just that Jadong does not have him on his radar. Um, but this build is like, this takes me back to 2010 Metalopolis. Like, the seven gate Blink Stalker Robo, kind of two or three base macro play, but um, very much so like a, 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 two, a two base safe-ish play, you know what I mean? And yeah. it doesn't really happen that way these day and age, this day and age rather. Protoss players have kind of learned, no, I, I need to be pretty hardcore about my third base or pretty hardcore about my two base. And they'll take risks like not adding the Robo in the name of more more stalkers. Well, Jadong's currently sitting at only 50 or uh, only 60 drones at this point, and he's building a lot of units. And especially as yeah. Roche speeds on its way. So if we are going to see Elfie try to take a third base momentarily here, as he's about oh. to throw down the pile and, <laughs> and Elfie's falling for it. There's going to be a lot of units coming yeah. his way. A lot of units. I mean, he definitely is going to have Blink, but the problem here is he's just now adding like his. Uh, this looks like it's going to be a total of five centuries. Which is about what you want this th these days. You don't want your 10 centuries of the days of old, but but he's just now adding them, so his force fields are going to be quite limited, which means if Jadong really pours it on, which it kind of looks like he is, because like you called out earlier, it was 60-some-odd it was drones and then units, and that's that seems to be what he's going to be doing here. Well, he's put a lot of units, but he has just thrown down his gases on the third base yeah. and also a Hydralisk then. So he's put a lot of units, but he's going to have to drone up to actually make use of those extractors. But he's still got a really comfortable army. I'm a little bit confused with what Jadong's planning at the moment, whether he was just building a lot of units in anticipation for something coming, or yeah. if he was looking to go across the map. But either way, if he doesn't actually do anything here, of course he could have drone and got the Hydrogen a little bit earlier and sooner. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because this third goes down roughly at about 11... They're actually like 10.30, 10.45. That's actually pretty regular timing, all things said. So. I'm not sure if Jadong was worried about a two-base attack just because the third base was yeah. fairly average. Um, but then you and I were starting to think he was looking to maybe cancel the third, but then he didn't really even do that. So I'm not sure what the read was here for Jadong. All right, well, Jadong does have the infestation pit and a secondary uh, evolution chamber coming down too. Wouldn't uh, be surprised to see Swarmost in this play. I wouldn't either. I just I think this might be a hole in Jadong's play, to be honest with you. Like, I don't like the half-assed Hydralis den into Swarmost. I feel like... He mediocrizes both. Like, this is a mostly unused Hydralist end so far. Yep. And he doesn't really have the resources to, like... Well, actually, as I say that, he's actually floating 1,400 metals, <laughs> so... Never mind everything I was about to say, but usually what ends up happening is you're, like, trickling out swarm hosts that aren't supported by a spire for Corruptors, and you don't have a number of Hydralists, so those swarm hosts aren't that dangerous, in my opinion. Jadon does throw a couple of Zerglings into the mix, picks up a couple of probes, but here come 10 swarm hosts. Yeah. They do but again, not supported, though. It, it, Mm. For now, I mean... Well, for now, but with the yeah. fourth base coming down, I'm pretty sure he'll want to continue to upgrade off his double evolution right. chambers that he has, and also throw down the spy very shortly. With 12 swarm hosts, you don't really need more than that at this point. Right. From here on out, he should start to bank his gas and then start to build support around them, I suppose. But so 13 swarm hosts, that's a yeah. lot. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot. You want about 18, so if he gets up to that number, that's a, that's a, the area you want to be at. But I'll tell you what, Elfie's on a timer. So you see this hallucinated phoenix going out. If they can spot and, and inform him that he's facing straight swarm host, like no spire, no hydros, just straight swarm host. Yeah. He needs to get out. Well, he's adding a second robo, I believe. I think I saw that. But he also needs, like, whoa, okay, boom, two warp prisms. I'm out on the map, and I'm actually taking a very quick fourth and maybe a fifth base. But if he doesn't, if he sits back, 
and these swarm hosts do get that support, and Jadon gets a fifth base on top of this. Ah. Belcher Vestige becomes a near impossibility for Protoss. He only has one robotics facility at the moment, but he has okay. now spotted the swarm host. As we can see, Jadon's starting to push up this ramp a little bit. Blink's going to work out really well for him. He can blink back and try not to lose too many yeah. units to these uh, locusts. But there's the second robotics facility, as you said, as well as plus three attack on the way. Yeah, we do have a couple of probe, or excuse me, uh, Zerglings in the back of that third base. So we've actually seen this a few times. You've commentated Huck uh, in this weird situation where he's having a tough time getting a third. That's what I forecast for Elfie right now. Like, Elfie's already battling Locust, which is this weird, cancerous, like, you're not dying, but you're slowly taking damage. Yeah. Um, the danger here, again, is though, if, if Jadon with these unsupported Swarmos gets his Locust too far away from the Swarmos, because Roaches won't protect him. Force fields go down, the Swarmos are trapped, and they die. And once they die, Zerg's in a lot of trouble. Uh, but if he can go through this phase where he's already doing damage and then joined by Corruptors, then Jadong's in a super powerful position. Yeah, I love the Boru on all the external bases that Elfie could attempt to try. We also have a third evolution chamber coming down here for Jadong too, so I think he's going to, well, he will be starting his melee upgrades, and for future notice, can go over to Broodlords yeah. and start the melee upgrades for them, and also potentially Ultras, just depending on what we see from Elfie. If he sticks on Colossus and Stalkers, then absolutely we can see Ultras come in later on. But absolutely. for now, you know, Jadon set himself up really nice. He could even afford to take a fifth base on the left-hand side at this point. There's, yeah. there's nothing really stopping him. Yeah, it's just kind of going to... It's when he decides. He's at 2,000 minerals. He's actually at 190 supply. Uh, what I'd like to see in what he's doing right now, and I love this about Jadon, he's adding so much sack defenses. Look at all his bases. Yeah. Uh, actually, just look at his one base, because right now that's <laughs> the only one he's doing. It. He is doing his main base, which is great, too, but he does want to think about bolstering those back doors. But also, and this is a soapbox I've been up on for a while, He's got Zerglings burrowed at, at the potential fourth base spots. Yeah. Jadong sees and knows all. He's uh, he's well informed. Just like he was in Brutal Man. Zerglings everywhere, Overlords everywhere. And he's about to break through here Roaches. Roaches at this point, not so useful. So if he's able to do a lot of damage, a recall goes to this base so he can try and get back to defend it. And he will defend it. Yeah. But these Roaches definitely just trade off. I mean, oh, at the he end doesn't of the day, he doesn't them. want yeah. them. So he's killed a couple of probes there, quite a few probes. This but is annoying too. What does... Elfie, at this point, on three bases, need to do to w to get a lead in yeah. this game. I don't think he's leading, especially with all these upgrades and the future play that Jadon has. What does Elfie need to do to, to grasp this game? Well, it's going to come down to the Colossus. Like, he needs he needs that ridiculous Colossus count that we thought was a, a bad idea. You need, like, seven or eight of them. And then he's got to have that standard, awesome Elfie army control where he actually focuses down the Corruptors really well with his Stalkers and, and kites back, and then he can snowball downhill with the gigantic Colossus count. But the reason why that's really hard is because Zerg's getting this position where they can start trading out. Like, these Corruptors, they just picked off a Colossus or two, and he doesn't really care. Like, he can lose three or four Corruptors uh, for that trade all day long because he can afford to do that, whereas Elfie, every Colossus that dies is one step uh, further into Death's Door. All right, well, Elfie at 190 supply, with plus three attack here, getting plus one shields, is about to finish two. Ideal would want to try and establish a fourth base at this point. Now he's starting to move out and get a bit eager. But he's got the Mothership Core. If that Mothership Core goes down, he's got to be very, very careful with yeah, any fight he takes. Well, Elfie, if he makes a blitz up that ramp and going towards the natural, uh, it's a little bit of a scary position here for Jadon. Jadon's going for the Mothership Core, focus it down, but at the cost of a lot of his Corruptors. This is that kind of situation I was talking about. Elfie gets a favorable trade there. He's fine with losing the Mothership Core. Of course, he'd love to have it, but he doesn't mind losing it. Corruptor's moving into flank on the Colossus. One loses half its health, but that's it. And all of a sudden, Jadong is in trouble. And look at these four swords coming down. Excellent four swords here. Well, actually, I say that. There's the fourth one comes down. Much, much better here from Elfie. If only the Mothership Core was alive, because he can go in the main base, do a yeah. lot of damage, and get out. But, oh, he turned around and actually jumps on top of the Swarm Host. Yeah, that's actually not the damage. best idea. They're going to do so much damage oh right off God, the bat. Oh, my God, all the Swarm Oh, they're almost all gone. Yeah, but this is, uh, I mean, the Colossus are gone, and watch the Locusts do. Goodbye, everything. Yeah. So, I mean, it was, it's a weird situation. So, if there's a fourth base behind this, I'm like, whoa, Elfie's way back in the game. But look at the supplies, Sean. It's 187 yeah. versus 111. Jadon 2,500 just made... minerals that he can't spin. And now here comes a million lings. Jadon just made 120 lings. Oh, I was off by a, a lot. I'm sorry, sorry to, to yeah. correct you on that. Looked like a million to me, though. It was very close. <laughs> The fourth base from Elfie, that, that borrowed Zergling is preventing him from taking that yeah. fourth. If that was there, look, he's still trying to do it. He can't get there. These poor zealots. Oh, my gosh. They're like, why did we get left behind? They're getting smashed. There's now enough Corruptors where you don't make Colossus, by the way, at this point. You're just done making Colossus because with that, without many Corruptors, you're like, well, what do I do? 
And all of a sudden, these links are going to go and destroy that Nexus. Um, well, oh, there was a Colossus. Well, that guy got one laser beam in. You know, one laser beam in and immediately out of the game. There's a lot of Corruptors and ten more Swarm Hosts on the way. So where was Elfie's downfall? Was it his attempt no to break base. to the natural? No fourth base? And War Prison. You have to exploit the lack of mobility. There was a chunk of time there where Jadong had Roaches, he had Swarm Hosts, and that was it. And yeah. he was mid-map, and a lot of times what you can do is you warp Prism in nine Zealots in the main base, so they send the Roaches back, the Swarm Hosts get forgotten, you surround Force Field, crush, and it's a different game. But without that ability to say, hey, your attention needs to be elsewhere, Jadong is able to focus down on the Swarm Hosts and not make a mistake, and that's when it becomes really hard for Elfie. Well, Elfie's climbing back up to 150 supply here, but he just doesn't have the army necessary to be able to take out Jadong here. He's no. got a lot of, you know, dead weight in the air, but Spine's on this right-hand side, Spawn, a Swarm Host on the left, and a lot of them coming down too. These Zealots are going to get shredded rather fast. The only purpose of Zealots in a PvZ when Swarm Hosts are abound is to be fighting where the Swarm Hosts are not, and that means killing a main base, attacking Spine Crawlers at a fourth, or something like that, but Locusts, they chew through Zealots like there's no tomorrow. Um, the Corruptors are hunting around looking for a target. They won't find one. Elfie is going to go to Storm. But with his main mind out, his natural thinning, and his third under constant duress, I, I don't mean to be that commentator that kills the excitement for people, but guys, kill it. we're watching a dead man walking right now. Kill it. He, he All right, well, a dead man. With the Greatest Spire coming in, these Corruptors will no longer be useless. They're going to go over uh, as Jadong has 200 supply at the moment, as he just built 20 roaches. Yeah. But he will be able to use the Corruptors to go over to, to, to the Brutalers very shortly. And yep. what does Elfie have to combat, you know, eight Brutalers Nothing. behind Swarm Host? No. Not too much at the moment. Down to 137 supply. He's got a bunch of Zealots running up north. But there's 20 roaches that have just been made with a bunch of Spine Crawls defending this natural. So this is not no going to work out too well either. Yeah, I mean, Jadong has is, has shut the door. One of the nice things about this Swarm Host play, too, is, is you, you're used to Zergs being on, like, nine bases. But with Swarm Host, it's actually more advantageous to have a very secure, like, four bases and then a fifth. You don't need the map like uh, Zergs used to have because your Swarm Hosts are very hardy. They're going to get that cost effectiveness that Zergs aren't used to. But where they fall is if they have too many bases that they then don't have stacked defenses at, all of a sudden, the Swarmos becomes a, like a burden, essentially. But on a secure 4 or 5 base in a very slow play style like this, Jadong is safe, and there's not really el much Elf he could do. All right, well, Jadong's coming in with the door doorbell uh, finisher here. As the Dang Swarmos, dong! Swarmos move into the, to the natural location. A couple of storms come down to bait these Corruptors off as they target down the Mothership Core, and that shall fall. Corruptors at this point can easily fall back and morph into Broodlords. Yeah. But Jadong, uh, if he breaks through this third base, there's absolutely no hope for Elfie. He's down 100 supply already. There's almost no help anyway. As the last couple of units get warped in, Elfie, I don't even know where he's going. He's going to this right-hand side. He doesn't know. Couple of Colossus caught. Oh, my gosh. They go full down easily. There goes the Observer as well. Yeah, that's not and looking good. Elfie's like, you know what? I'm going to go back to that forest of spine crawlers and take a crack at it. I'm going to storm the spine crawlers. Yes. <laughs> uh, that's not going to yeah. work out too good. Corruptors do come back to uh, storm something here. And a couple of them do die. But still, the third base compromise. At what cost? But at what cost? At what cost? Here is the 